Hello and thank you for watching. Uh, this is part two of what I've decided to call To Shell and Back Again, uh, which is a series of videos that I'm making uh, meant to guide uh, from the very basics to uh, being pretty good at using uh, Pluto's uh, shell tool. Um, and that's, it's pronounced shell, but it's, it's uh, you know, instead of the S, it's a five, so it's, it's five H-E-L-L. Uh, we're going to start off this video, um, which if you watched the previous video, by the way, part one, uh, I covered how to uh, get the tool, how to get shell using uh, Pluto's GitHub repository and compile it uh, from source code. Uh, we also covered how to build the rootkit folder using the core-r command, and also the second thing you should do first after getting uh, shell running is... Uh, generating the uh, rainbow tables with pwgen um, and so this would be kind of your next step uh, and this is a you know this is kind of like if you're brand new to the game uh, so um, you know, just if you're if you've been playing Greyhack for a while then some of this will probably not be applicable to you but um, anyway moving right along so in this video I'm going to cover how to use shell to solve the tutorial mission, uh, which we need to solve in order to obtain a hack shop IP address. Um, those of you who are not new to the game, uh, it may, you know, you'll know that there are actually many ways to obtain a hack shop IP address, and the one you get from completing this email, or this mission rather, is not the only one, nor are you required to use the one that you get uh, from this mission. Um, so, um, but this is kind of the beginner's uh, way to get a Hackshop IP address. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reset uh, the tutorial mission for myself so that I can do it again. Uh, I've done it many times, um, but we're going to reset it. Um, so you can see I have immediately uh, received an email. Um, says, I'm watching you. Very ominous. Uh, Hi, you do not know me. I monitor new users who register on remote machines like the one you are using. Uh, a lot of words, blah, blah, blah. Um, I need the credentials of this email address. And it's, you know, I've got the streamer mode thing on, so it covers up email addresses and IPs and whatnot, so I can't see it, but that's okay. Um, uh, the mail client leaves a config file on the person's computer with the encrypted password. Uh, that file is called mail.txt, and it's in the config folder of every user on a computer, including your own, by the way. So if you haven't yet, you should delete those on your own computer. Um, there's no reason to keep them. Um, and if you ever need to look up your credentials again, uh, you can look them up uh, in that same... Uh, preferences application settings.exe if you go over here to accounts which I'm not going to click on it because I don't know if streamer mode covers it up but if you go over here to accounts it'll have your email address and password and bank account and password and your crypto wallet and password um, so you can always refer to those um, so there's no reason to keep those text files on your own computer um, anyway so we have this mission we need to get the email password for this user uh, they've given us an IP address. Uh, it's, you know, we can't see it because it's kind of covered up by streamer mode, but it is a, uh, um, what you call the public IP address. It's not the LAN address. So we, we know the network, but we won't know which computer, um, uh, which computer on that network has the user. Could be, you know, any of them. Um, and so we need to get the password for that email address. Um, now there is a very, very easy way to solve this mission uh, involving social engineering where you just send an email to the administrator and they just give you a password for this user. Um, but let's see, let's see how we can do it, you know, the quote unquote, the real way, the hacker way with Shell. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Shell, um, again, having compiled it in the previous video. Um, and let's just see what we can find out about this network. So. Uh, we'll use Probe, which is Shell's uh, kind of network mapping tool. Uh, it's going to give us some who, in, who is information about the administrator, along with some uh, information about the network itself. 
Um, we discovered four machines on the network. Um, there's probably more, but this is all we can see from outside the network. We've got a couple of open ports, port 22 and port 80. Um, and then obviously, you know, of course, if, uh, since there, you know, we have a router, uh, anytime you're dealing with a router, there's always port zero, which will attack the kernel router.so uh, library. So we've got a couple of choices. Uh, we know that the router is not going to contain our user uh, because routers never have any users. All they have is root. Um, so we're gonna we're not going to do port zero, but let's try one of these other ones. Let's try port 22. Uh, we're gonna see if we can exploit the SSH library on port 22 and gain entry to this network. So. Uh, the way we do that in shell, uh, we use the target command to set our target port. So target-p22 uh, sets the target port to 22. And then we use the db command with the dash r flag, which uh, I believe is for remote, um, to uh, run an exploit scan. Uh, and it, we could pass in the IP address and the port again, um, but since we have them set as the target, it just uses what we already have set to the target. So let's see what we got. It looks like, man, there's a lot on here. Uh, I see a lot of failures, but I think I see some successes in here too. Um, this is the raw output from the exploit scan and the overflow attempt, um, because we don't know what, you know, we don't know if attack will, if an attack will work or not until we try it. So we just try every every one of them. So um, a lot of failures, um, but a lot of successes here. So we have looks like we have a user shell. Oh, this is really good. So we got a user shell and it's for the user that we uh, are targeting. Like this is our victim. So BL true, true skill or whatever. We got a user shell from, from true skill, which that's our user that we're looking for. So this is, this is like bingo. That's all we need. I mean, that's, this is like best case scenario. So, um, all of the output from this will have been stored in shells buffer. Um, if you're new to shell, um, the buffer is where, where you can store objects, um, for use in exploits, uh, or as a result of exploits, you can put anything in the buffer really. Um, and so since we tried all of these attacks, whatever we got back when we tried them all, it, it automatically stores in the buffer. Um, so we can get it there. Um, so we get into the buffer by typing malp, M-A-L-P. That stands for memory alpha, and then we press 5 to get into the buffer. Um, the first entry in the buffer is always going to be the computer that's running shell. Basically, your you know the computer you're starting from. Uh, we can see it's got a lot of processes running. Um, and then everything after that is what we got back from the attack. So, um, it actually, uh, we got really lucky because there was a lot going on there, but we only got four objects out of that. Um, guest shell, guest file, guest shell, and then the one user shell with the user we want. So um, we kind of, we got pretty lucky here. So we got a user shell for the target user already. If we didn't though, having any kind of shell is really good. Like having any kind of shell, we can pretty much always escalate to root and, you know, pivot onto other targets within the network if we need to. Um, any kind of shell is great. Uh, if the only thing that we got back was a guest file, that would be still probably pretty good because you can use a guest file to, uh, you know, list out the contents of the file system and read them if you have access. So, like, just to give you an example of what we can do that, let me, let me pull that up. I've selected the guest file, um, and you can see we have all these options. Uh, I can actually... Um, I think I can, yeah, let's, let's just go to, uh, what is the path here? This is in the, in the root folder. Let's get a root file out of this by pressing one that adds another guest file to the buffer. But instead of being the slash root directory, it's now the, the actual like slash or the, the root of the file system. So I'll choose that. And then if we go to Felix, I'll press F to enter Felix, which is, shells um, file explorer um, I'm in Felix now so if we I use the arrow keys we can maneuver through the file system so if we go to home use the right arrow key to enter the home directory uh, we have this true true skill here that's the one with our victim 
If we go to config, we can see the mail file. If we press the right key, so even with a guest file object, I was able to list uh, or print the contents of the mail.txt file. And this is what we need to complete this mission. So if I copy this hash, um, you know, this is the username and password for that user's email account. Um, so that, I mean, that's, that's it. Like we just completed it with a guest file object. Um, so I'll exit out of the buffer. Uh, you know, we had a root shell, but we didn't even need it. Like we didn't have to upload the root kit. We didn't have to start shell on the computer. We didn't have to do all, all we needed was that guest file. Uh, so now to decrypt that, uh, I'm going to run gopher, which is shells, uh, utility for decrypting passwords, uh, or one of them rather. There's also hashim, um, but hashim works a little bit differently, and I will get into that in a future video. Um, so we'll paste that hash here and use gopher to decrypt it. We have the password here is tinol, tinoli, I don't know how you say that. Um, and that's all we need. So I'll reply to this email with that tinoli password. And there we go. You have done well. If you want to work, you may want to visit this web, and then it gives an IP address. That IP address is a hack shop. Uh, hack shop will contain, uh, as the name might suggest, um, tools for hacking, and it's also where you can get missions or jobs or whatever to do black hat stuff. Um, in Gray Hack, you have the Karma system. So if you do hack shop missions, those are always considered black hat missions. Uh, they make your karma go lower. Um, although I don't know why white hats on the left and black hats on the right, those seem reverse, but in any case, um, and this interface doesn't really work. <laughs> uh, you know, I have negative 100 karma, which I might be the limit. I don't know. I don't know if that part's even working yet. Um, and yet it's all still right in the middle. So. Um, but the other thing is you can do missions for the police, and the, that gives you good karma. So uh, missions for the hack shop, bad karma. Missions for the police, good karma. Um, but the karma system doesn't really work that well and doesn't seem to matter all that much anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, in any case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Uh, we worked through the tutorial. Oh, you know what? I was going to show the easy method, too. So we worked through the tutorial. Uh, we got the easy, you know, we got the password. We sent it sent the email, we're good there. Um, if we didn't have that and we needed a way into the system, uh, you know, if we look at this port scan again, if I do uh, probe show, um, you know, we have this port 22 open, port 22 is SSH, but we don't have any way to log into it because we don't have a username and password. Well, we can get the username and password very easily using social engineering because we know we know the username of this user because um, we have the email address. So, um, and I mean, we know it anyway because of other, you know, hacking it already. But we know the username because it's the first part of the email address, everything before the at sign. We know the administrator, uh, the admin contact, because we have it up here from that very first uh, port scan, right? So the admin is. Uh, Nikki Markson's, and this is the email address. So let's just copy that email address real quick and copy that. Um, and then we know the admin's name, which is Nikki Markson's, uh, which I, I think I just said that actually, but whatever. Sorry for rambling. So we can get the password for this user just by basically asking the administrator for it. Uh, our admins really don't <laughs> really aren't qualified to be admins if they fall for social engineering this easily. But basically, um, if we come over here to our email client and we click on this pencil like we're going to send an email, um, you know, we can just send an email to arbitrarily here. We can type whoever we want, put whatever subject, type whatever we want in here. But we also have all these social engineering templates over here on the left. Um, the one we want is, uh, you know, there's all these different social engineering templates, but the one we want is login issues. Basically, we're going to email this administrator and we're going to say, hey, oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. We're going to say, hey, admin, uh, I forgot my password. Can you tell me what it is? And, 
you know, being that this is a game and they're not very good admins, they will just say, of course, here's your password. So uh, if I send this email, uh, yeah, it says, hi, I just checked the status of the network. Everything seems correct. Have you checked that your user and password is correct? These are the credentials of your computer, user true, true skill, and then the password is plest, P, it looks like P-L-E-S-T. Just that easily, we have the username and password for that SSH. Um, and in shell, we can connect with SSH and then the username, which is true, true skill, and then the at symbol followed by the password, which is um, plesk, plest, and then the IP address, which uh, I have in the original email, I have the IP address there. If we paste it, we paste it, and then boom, now we have a shell. Um, we connected with SSH. Uh, in shell, anytime you do something that gets you a shell, it just puts it in the buffer for you. So we go back to the buffer, press 5 to look at the buffer, and you can see here the very newest entry, entry number 6. We have a shell on the for that user on that system. And so from there, we could then, again, find and read that mail.txt file. Um, if you weren't doing this with shell and you didn't have any other tools available to you, um, you would want this decipher program that's included as an attachment on the email. Um, the decipher program, you point it at uh, the path to a file, and it's, it's expecting a file that contains the, the full hash of the username and password. So it's expecting it, you know, basically the contents of that mail.txt file. Um, you know, it's expecting you basically to download that file and uh, use Decipher and pass in the path to that file, which you could do with a file explorer. You could open the file explorer and then just click and drag it onto your computer. And then you would use this Decipher program to decipher it. Um, but we have Shell, which is much better uh, for a whole lot of reasons, so we didn't have to do all that. Uh, instead, we just made it harder on purpose um, rather than just using social engineering to get the password. So, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and end this video now. Uh, only 17 minutes this time. The first time I tried to record this, I got almost 35 minutes through it, and we hadn't even finished this mission yet because uh, I tend to blab on. So, um, anyway, this will be the end of this video. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, we will continue on in the next one. See you then. Bye.